welcome to the Pearls on the Moon podcast. My name is Jeanette and I am recording in Central Tennessee in the United States. This is a knitting video podcast where I'll be sharing some of my knits, things that I've made, uh, things that I want to make, um, and everything in between, things that are half finished and have been on my needles for a little while. I have never done a video podcast before, so this is going to be a new adventure and I hope that you'll be a little bit patient with me while I figure out, you know, kind of camera settings and best ways to upload and things like that. I plan to put some uh, show notes below, so any of the patterns that I show, uh, I'll make sure and put those. I'm also active on Ravelry and Instagram as Pearls on the Moon, and I'm pretty pretty good about putting my information in Ravelry about the sizes that I've made and the yarns that I used and the needles and the gauge and all of that information. So um, thank you for watching in advance. I am a huge fan of podcasts myself. I watch a lot of different video podcasts and I really enjoy uh, seeing what people are making from all around the world. As a matter of fact, I think that's my my very favorite part of video podcasts is being able to knit and while I'm knitting, maybe watch someone in a different country, you know, talking about what they're making, you know, maybe in South America or in, uh, you know, across, across the pond, as they say in the UK or Ireland. I think that's just one of the great things about our digital age that we live in. So, all right, with that said, I think I'll jump right in and get started with some knitting. Uh, the first thing that I have to share is this sweater. So this is a, it's got kind of a funnel neck, a turtleneck here. This is the Hard Cider Sweater by Thea Coleman. And I'm going to stand up so you can see some of the uh, detail at the hem here. So the hem has this beautiful, got an undershirt on, has this beautiful lace detail and a ribbing at the bottom, just enough to give it some interest. And then otherwise, it's mainly stockinette. I've folded my cuffs. I actually like to have them a little bit long so that when I'm outside, I can uh, turn them down. This is a really warm, wooly sweater. And then when I'm inside, I'm, I have a habit of turning them up like this. So. Uh, kind of a stockinette body. It's got a raglan construction, so you can kind of make it out there where the sleeves are. And then the part that I, I drew me to this sweater I thought was really neat was this beautiful, it's like a funnel neck, or you could do it as sort of a, a loose cowl neck. Um, it's a three by, surprise, it's a three by three rib um, up at the top here. And if I remember right, I think it's pick up here and then bind off. And so just, you know, make sure you bind off pretty loosely. And then I like to wear it as kind of this sort of wide turtleneck like so. So this is a warm sweater. I'm not going to lie. I actually, I have no shoes and socks on right now because it's pretty, uh, it's cool in Tennessee today. Uh, it's. We got a little bit of frost last night, but I don't know that it's really quite cold enough to wear the sweater, but I'm wearing it anyway. Uh, as far as the yarns go, so again, the pattern is Hard Cider by Thea Coleman. And then the, the yarns that I used are, I think it's pronounced B Shabouche. So this is their Petite Lamb's Wool. If I, I've never done this before. Does it work like that? I guess it does. Can it focus? There we go. That seems about right. Um, this really pretty petite, this really pretty lamb's wool. And then I held one strand of that coupled with this mohair. And this is their silk mohair, silk and mohair. It's really nice. So it gives the final fabric a beautiful halo structure to it but it also I mean it also just has a I don't know it doesn't feel um 
it's not all mohair. It's a mixture of the mohair and then the, the lamb, the, uh, the lambs hold together. So I think this is probably one of my favorite things that I have knit so far. It's a, a beautiful sweater and knitting it was just a real pleasure, especially, you know, I love stocking it going round and round and round, but then getting to the hem and having just a little bit of detail, uh, that was kind of nice and fun. So, all right. So yay, my first project that I've ever described on YouTube. How exciting. Now, the reason that I'm starting this channel right now um, is that I, I actually wanted to show the sweater that I just finished knitting uh, that I'm going to give as a gift. And it's going to my husband, so it's not going very far. I can always ask, I can always uh, get it back from him. But um, this is a sweater that I just finished a few days ago. And let me hold up the color work portion. It's pretty big. He's a very tall guy. So the body is really long. And here is some close up of the, the color work of the yoke. And this is the um, Viter sweater. It's V E T U R. And that is Icelandic for winter. So it's really and truly a winter sweater. Uh, I do have the pattern here. I usually, for sweaters, I often print the pattern out because I'll make changes. And I made a lot of changes to this one. And that way I can keep track and write down what changes I've made. So this is what the original, um, or what this, the pattern as written looks like. And this is an Istex pattern. And the designer is, oh, I can't remember the first name, but the last name is Jon's daughter. Um, John, Jon Jon's daughter, I, has, I do have some notes. Let me look. Vidis Jon's daughter. I hope I'm, I'm saying that. I'm not sure that I'm saying that right, but I'm trying. Uh, so you'll notice on this one, this is lots of color work from the yoke all the way down. And I love it. I think it's beautiful. And I would have liked to probably knit the color work all the way through. But here in Tennessee, mm, we, do get, we do get some hard freezes, but we don't really get enough cold weather to justify color work throughout. So um, if you haven't knit color work before, what's going to end up happening is you're really going to have these maybe white strands running, you know, on the back side of the sweater so that you end up with a really thick fabric. And I just felt like that would be just a little bit too thick. So what I ended up doing was knitting the body in a, a single color and the arms in a single color. And then right here where the yoke picks up with color work, I started my color work for it. So I must really love my husband because I did the body in black and I'll talk about the yarn in just a second and then the uh, the yoke is of course the color work so this was a lot of charcoal gray black knitting um, all the way up the body and then the fun part when I got to the yoke. Now the yarn that I used is an Icelandic yarn so it's sort of a traditional Icelandic pattern coupled with an Icelandic yarn. And I used Plotilopi, which is unspun Icelandic yarn. And let me show you here. So here's the, um, the dark gray. And what it means when it says that it's unspun is that it, it really has not been, right? It's not been spun together. So when it's unspun, it's very easy to just sort of pull the fibers apart. They just, they just shred apart. Um, for this pattern, I held right two strands together. So I had two strands of the charcoal gray. And then when I got to the white, I had two strands of white. And that seemed to work pretty well. I'd say for the whole sweater, I probably broke the strands on accident, not meaning to maybe five times total. Um, some people don't necessarily like knitting with this because it does pull apart. But for me, the I mean, if it pulls apart, the great thing is 
it's really easy to kind of just put it back together. So let me see if I can show that. So if I just pull it apart, right, then all you have to do is kind of overlap it again and just give it a little bit of a rub and it's back together. So, so for me, I really liked knitting with the Platulopi. I think it came out really well. And I used Platulopi for both the black and the white. I think I got these, um, there's a couple of places in the US that, that sell this unspun Icelandic wool. I know the Woolly Thistle is one store, online store that does. Uh, Tolt is another one, that's T-O-L-T, -T, Tolt. I can't remember where I got both of these, but it was probably one of those two stores. The red for the pattern, I used, um, I did not have any uh, Flutu Lopi for it, so I used the regular Lopi, so Let Lopi, which is another Icelandic yarn. The sweater is very Icelandic, right? Just this really nice. Now this one is, I believe it's, it must be spun. Yeah, I can see the twist on it. So this one, don't have to worry so much about it pulling apart. And I didn't have to double this. I just held a single strand. So, so again, here's the final product. I hope you can see a little bit of the halo. Now, I am a really big fan of rustic wools. I love... You know, I, I don't, I don't mind scratchy. I mean, obviously I'm wearing mohair and lamb's wool on my neck. So uh, results may vary, right? If you're more sensitive, then you may not um, enjoy knitting with lopi or palata lopi quite so much. But for me, I really like this. And I think my husband will too. He's, I've knit him some lopi hats before and he's worn those. So I'm taking that as a pretty good sign that maybe it, a sweater will be okay too. I would love to have some advice. Oh, oh, I should also say, so I also modified the neck. <laughs> so uh, I, did, I didn't do the fleece stitch, that, that single color work through the body. Then I kind of modified the yoke to have a few more colors. And then the neckline, I used the neck from another Istex pattern that's very popular called the Radari sweater. And for, yeah, I was just running out of black. You could see I kind of got kind of low here and started to get kind of nervous. So I changed it a little bit and ended up doing uh, the Radari neck. So, um, oh, I was going to ask for some help. I do, I had one issue that I can't quite figure out how to do. So grafting, this is a bottom up sweater. So knit the bottom, knit the sleeves, and then join it, and then knit the top, knit the yoke. And one thing that caught me was trying to graft it at the end. You can see I actually have a little hole there. And the reason was when I was trying to graft, sewing with platylope is, I mean, it just pulls apart, right? You're trying to pull it through. And so I couldn't quite figure out a good strategy. I didn't know if I should maybe hold more strands of platylope together or order some, you know, dark gray uh, letlope and use that to kind of graft the underarms. So I, I I'm going to try some of those, but I'd be really curious if anyone out there has a good strategy for uh, grafting or sewing really with platylope. How do you, how do you make that happen? So <laughs> I'm just really curious. It's unspun. So for me, it, it, it was a, a bit of a challenge. Now I'm a big fan of seeing the inside of sweaters too. So here's a little bit of the the color work on the inside. Oops, ignore my uh, parts there, but I love seeing that. I love color work. It's my favorite and this one came out really well. So I am really excited to give this as a Christmas gift. I, this is the first sweater that I have made for my husband. Um, we have been married for a couple years. I have made him socks and made him hats. And now I will add a sweater to the things that I've made for him. All right, 
So let's go ahead and uh, look a little bit at some other projects. I have things that I finished recently, but I also have things that I thought uh, maybe it would be fun to share. So one that I, I finished a while a while back, this has been like a year ago, but it is my most worn hat. And I thought I would share that, um, especially since it's uh, holiday season and winter, uh, now is a good time. So um, this is my, I wear this hat all the time and I get a ton of compliments on it. So there's the hat and of course it's got this uh, fuzzy pom-pom and yeah, it's just unique enough that I get, I get lots of compliments. So um, that sounds like I have a lot of ego. I don't get a lot of compliments uh, on other things, but for some reason this hat seems to bring them out. So this pattern is the, I wrote it down, Timber Bay Hat by Dandelion Girl Designs. And again, this is an older pattern. Um, I think I knit it a year ago, last winter. It's got a twisted rib and the cuff is folded over. So it's really nice and warm and kind of hugs the ears. And then it has combinations of different stitch patterns. Now there's a number of different hats like this and they were, I know they were really popular among knitters um, for the last couple years. Uh, things called the copycat beanie, uh, kind of based on a real popular beanie that you could buy in big stores um, here in the United States. And maybe elsewhere too, but I know for sure you could find this the style of beanie was just really popular and they were selling them everywhere a few years ago. And so there were knitted pa knitting patterns based on them or kind of inspired by them. And this is one, this is one that has worked really well for me. I've probably knit it maybe, maybe four times and I've given a lot of them away as gifts. It's, it's a fun one to put a fun pom-pom on and give as a gift. The yarn for this, and I think that's maybe just, it just happens to be a great combination of yarn and pattern. The yarn for this is the Woolfolk Tove, T-O-V, Tove or Tove. And yeah, it's, it's just kind of just slouchy enough, covers the ears just right. And I remember I almost ran out of yarn. It was just the right amount of yarn um, to make the hat. Now the pom-pom on top, I'm sorry, I don't remember where I got the pom-pom from, but I did attach it and I do this with all my pom-poms, whoop, with a snap. So here's the, uh, the metal snap on the pom-pom. You can kind of see it there and I've sewed it on. And then on the hat, I've also sewed it onto the hat. So this is nice for gifts because if somebody's gonna wash their hat, um, I'm, a, I'm a wool lover, so I wash most of my stuff by hand, but uh, I'm not sure, maybe you could throw this in the washer, but no matter how you wash it, you can detach the pom-pom and then wash it. So, and then it just snaps right back on. So I wanted to share that again for anybody who's looking for a good uh, you know, Christmas knit, something that knits up kind of fast. And that yarn is just delicious for this type of hat. I also really like, I think a twisted rib, it just looks so sharp, doesn't it? And I can kind of compare it to just a regular rib on my sleeve versus the twisted. I feel like it just looks really, really sharp on the hat here. All right, so again, that's the Timber Bay and Dandelion Girl was the, the uh, designer for that one. And let's see, so that's one hat. This one's a little bit older. Now, ones that I finished very recently have sort of a hat and mitten combo here. I recently finished, this is a sock head hat. And I did this in a self-striping yarn. This is Turtle Pearls yarn. 
and the colorway is called Mistletoe Kisses. <laughs> Isn't that a fun name for a Christmas winter yarn? And so you've got kind of your classic red and green. Now the brim, um, I do not know. It was from, it was leftover. So somewhere in my stash, the is a kind of a foresty green color. Um, so I'm not sure what the what I made the brim out of, but I made the hat, and I actually made the hat after. I had made some fingerless mittens. So I've got some fingerless mittens here. And this is also, this is the Turtle Pearls Mistletoe Kisses colorway. Uh, you can see the stripes are a little bit bigger on the mittens than on the hat because of course the circumference of each of those is changing. Now for the mittens, the pattern is the uh, color block mitts and it's a free pattern by Pearl Soho. I did the larger size and one thing that I would change if I knit them again is I would do the smaller size. They just, for me, the, the yarn and needle combo, they just came out a little bit, just a little bit big. I like it a little bit snugger. So for me, I would go down, but that might be, um, I used their recommended needle size and everything. So I could go down in the pattern and keep the same needle size. And here's the other one. Aren't those fun? And I used that same scrap green that I had to do the cuffs. And I really like how those came out. Now for the sock head hat, this is the sock head slouch hat by, um, Boho Knits. Sorry, I knit a lot, so I don't always know the designers. Um, Boho Knits, who's Kelly. And this one is also a free pattern. So this whole combo was one super fun, super beautiful, um, self-striping. And I was able to stretch it just a little bit by using that extra green that I had in my stash. And so the sock head hat, of course, it's a little more fun and you can wear it lots of different ways. You can wear it with sort of the long cuff there and it is called the sock head slouch. So it's kind of slouchy or if you'd like, it also turns up really nicely. So both of those and I've got some, I'm all decked out for Christmas. Bring on the snow. I'm ready. Yeah. And this one I just finished. Um, I actually knit almost the entire thing over Thanksgiving break. So I had a couple of days off from work and uh, we watched lots of Christmas movies and put up a, a tree. And then I spent time knitting with this really nice Christmas colorway. So that was a fun, a fun treat. All right. So those are all things that I have finished fairly recently, right? Or things that I, I really love that I've finished. I also have some things that I've cast on recently, some works in progress to show you. So um, here are some of the things that I am currently excited about and working on. And they're not very far along because I did just finish up a bunch of stuff. So this one is, it could be anything, right? It could be a hat. It could be a sweater. It turns out this is a sweater. So the start of a sweater. Um, this is going to be, I think I have a copy here. This is going to be the everyday sweater. So this is a pattern, uh, new-ish, new I think it came out a couple weeks ago by uh, Andrea Mowry. And it's a kind of a, well, it's called an everyday sweater. And the yarn, I had this yarn in my stash um, that I was really excited to use for it. So I, I am a huge fan of uh, 
Scandinavian and um, yarns from northern all, all over Europe and northern Europe and South America too but mainly I really love knitting like I love Rauma this is a, a Norwegian yarn and I, I could knit with this all the time I just love knitting with it um, so this one is Rauma fennel um, and it is sort of this purple heathered purple color and I thought that would make a really nice everyday sweater. It's got just enough interest to the color, right? It's got some kind of dark gray in there, but then also um, some lighter bits. And I actually think it's, let's see if I can block the bottom. <laughs> Clearly not very good at this yet. So um, yeah, it's got some lighter purple in as well. Almost like it almost gets to a rose, but not quite. Um, the colorway here is 4128. And I can tell you, I did get this at the Wooly Thistle, so I really like, they have a really nice selection of very wooly yarns. And I have cast on, it is a top-down sweater, and so I've cast on the neck. Now, this one calls for a 2 by 2 tubular rib. I'm usually really lazy, and not lazy, I just... I just do a long tail German cast on for everything, but I'm very, I'm proud of myself because I did uh, branch out and try the two by two tubular. So the pattern includes some video tutorials and I watched those and went and yeah, followed the directions and now that is cast on. Um, and, and I do like the, the way the edge is sort of knitting up. It does look a little bit different than my normal go-to, which is the uh, long tail cast on, the German long tail, right? And I think there's a couple of different names for that same cast on. It's nice and it's stretchy. And um, so this one is, I've started, right? But I haven't gotten very far yet. And I think I've got a, a little bit of ways to go left on the neck and then I'll start doing increases um, for the yoke and we'll see how it goes from there. So. Another very wooly wool, uh, you can probably tell a theme, right? The lopi and the rauma and the, uh, the lamb's wool. I'm, I'm a big fan of non-superwash, although I do like to play with superwash stuff too. And my last thing um, that I brought to show you is a superwash uh, sweater that I've got. So, or excuse me, a superwash project. So I cast on for the everyday sweater and then, because I love to have a sweater on the needles, but then I also cast on for um, a hat as well. And so this one, when I was looking at the everyday sweater, I also saw that uh, Andrea Mowry had just released this hat, which is called the Harlow Worsted. And I have knit one of her patterns before. It's a brioche hat. And I've knit one of her brioche patterns before and I found it really well written and easy to follow. And I thought, oh, I'd really like to knit a worsted version um, and give that a go. So I got the pattern and then for this one, I'm using for soft, you know, get a little bit softer. Not everything is, is rustic here. So um, I have some Malabrigo Rios, so these two colors. I thought would look really nice, almost like like a, a light purple and a shadow. I guess I'm on a purple kick. My sweater is purple and then this hat is purple as well. Um, so I thought these two would look really good. Um, they're both Malabrigo Rios. This one is, I think it's Pocion, P-O-C-I-O-N, which I looked up and that's Spanish for potion. I thought that was a lovely, lovely name. And then this one is one of my Malabrigo favorites. I love this colorway. Um, and this one is called Pearl. And it is, it's, it's got, I mean, it is a lilac, but also a little bit gray, really beautiful together. So I cast on for the Harlow hat. And this is how much I've done. So again, this is brioche, so I'm going to kind of Open it up so you can see 
right? And I've got as my main color is the pearl, that lighter colorway. And then if I turn it inside out, you can see better the, um, the potion, poison colorway, that darker. This one is a reversible hat, so I think that's just gonna look really nice and be nice and warm. What was fun about these two uh, cast-ons, because I did them kind of one right after the other, is that the everyday sweater cast-on, this was a tubular cast-on, and then this was a tubular with two colors. So hmm, I, I'm i pretty proud. Like I said, I, I usually go, to the, go straight to the same cast-on every time, so I'm proud that I did that. And it's always good to, to learn, so. So that one's knitting up really, really well, really beautifully. And one of the things that inspired me to go for this Harlow hat was that the one that I've knit before, and sorry, this this hat has been worn a lot. I wear this all the time. Um, this is another Andrew and Mowry, and this is the Vanilla Fog hat. And it is another brioche. Right? I, I really like the way that these hug. It's different, right? It's different than my slouchy hat that I had on earlier, this one. But if you're going hiking or something and you want a hat, like this is kind of, I'm going out, right? And I'm going not hiking. I wouldn't necessarily wear this one hiking, but for hiking and skiing, um, I really like this type, this style. And the brioche makes it really um, kind of hug your head and nice and warm. The Vanilla Fog one, I'm sorry, I don't know, I have no idea which uh, yarns I used for this because I used um, leftovers and then it's marled. So you hold one color, looks like I held a white throughout, and then a second color, the dark blue, and then the light blue. So you're always holding two colors um, as you knit this one and it gives it that really cool marled look to it. So I remember, I've knit this one a few years ago and I remember thinking it was really well written and a, an excellent brioche project. And that's part of why I got the Harlow because I thought, well, I really enjoyed that one. I think I'll really enjoy this one too. For anyone who's watching who uh, has not knit brioche before, another project, and I, I don't have one with me because I, I gave it away as a, a Christmas gift uh, two years ago. But my first Brio project that I did was a Pearl Soho cowl. And I really liked it because once you got past the cast on for the brioche, it was just round and round and round and then the cast off. So if you're looking to learn, there's a free Pearl Soho cowl. I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact name, but I'll try to put it, uh, maybe I'll figure out how to edit and put it in here. Um, but that was a great first brioche project because it didn't have any decreases or anything. So I knit that first to learn to brioche. And then I knit this and this was great because it had some decreases. And now I'm knitting this one and this one will also have decreases. And I, I think it's just, just like everything else, a little bit of practice and it's not, it's not, too, it's not too complicated. So those are all the things that I'm working on. Uh, let's see, the last bit that I would share is that I have also been daydreaming about what I want to work on, or what I want to cast on, future cast-ons, um, and I always have a list of, you know, projects that I've seen other people making. A lot of folks right now are making the half and half wrap, triangle wrap. That is another Pearl Soho design. So. I, I think I, I maybe that one is in my future. Um, I've also been looking at sock patterns. I almost always have a pair of socks on the needles, but I don't right now. And so maybe casting on some socks and maybe a wrap over the holidays. So uh, I think I'll maybe, so that's what I've got for knitting. And I think I'll take just a few minutes for anyone who's interested and talk a little bit about uh, just kind of me in general and, uh, yeah, just some general stuff. So like I said, I live here in Tennessee. Um, I am married. We do not have any children. We don't have any pets. Um, we 
you know, we do a lot of traveling to go see our families and my husband and I both work full time. So uh, I work at a university, I'm a university professor and I knit pretty much any time I'm not at work. So if I'm not, if I'm not teaching or at work, then I'm probably knitting. And um, yeah, that's kind of the, the general bit of it. Right now, since the holidays are around the corner, I love the holidays because it means that our semester ends and we have a little bit of a break. And if there are any teachers watching this, you know exactly what I mean. Having that, you know, <laughs> there's like so many things that I, I am ready to do when the holidays get here. I'm like, I need to wash my car and I need to do this and I need to do this. And there's things that I need to do, but then also it's really nice to sit back and relax a little bit. So, so yeah, um, thanks for joining me today and I hope you guys enjoyed this and have a great holiday season. Bye.